Yo, what's going on, Generals? It's your two favorite anchors here, Max and Brady, yeah, with another edition of Five Star News. Great intro, Max. Everyone knows us, the best news anchors around, so let's quit bragging on ourselves and get right into the show. Well, I was kind of liking all of the bragging. Yeah, it was kind of nice. But let's get some announcements. And today we have Isaac Delk and Key Ron Freed with What's Up Heritage. Welcome back to What's Up Heritage. Now, let's get on to some Wednesday announcements. Seniors, as graduation gets closer, so is the time to get your cap and gown. So be sure to order your cap and gowns at Jostens. Next up, our Play Little Woman will be premiering on March 8th through 11th. Prices may vary based on the dates. And lastly, if you need to change classes for next year but miss the deadline, well, talk to counselors to see what they can do to help. Now, let's go on to the weather for other man, Kieran Freed. Thanks, Isaac. Now let's get on to the weather. On Wednesday, it's going to be mostly cloudy with a high of 73 and a low of 67. Thursday, we'll have scattered showers with a high of 82 and a low of 52. Now let's get back to the anchors for more news. Great job as always, you guys, and really looking forward to those warmer weathers. To the news now, and here to see some really awesome news late last week from the Georgia Department of Education. Sure did. The DOE named HHS as an AP honor being recognized in the categories of AP STEM and AP STEM achievements. Yeah, but what does that really mean? Here's Five Star News reporters Jonathan Glover and Laura Mock with more details. So last week, uh, the State Department of Education recognized AP Honor Schools, and Heritage High School was named an AP Honor School in two categories, uh, in the category of STEM and STEM Achievement. Uh, that's for the number of AP courses that we offer for math and science, and also for how highly our students achieved on the AP exams in math and science. Uh, it says a lot about the school. It says, uh, first of all, that we have teachers that are dedicated and very knowledgeable to become AP certified. Um, we have students that will take that challenge and take those challenging courses, um, and that we have students who work hard to, to achieve um, because they've achieved highly on the AP exams. So congratulations AP teachers and AP students on that honor school recognition for Heritage High School. So I, you know, I teach honors world so I think that anytime you um, have situations where you can take an AP or an honors course um, <clears throat> whether it to be to, to for what for college prep or college bound um, information or to get college credit for a class uh, it's always vital and I think it's important for some students to be challenged at, a, at the highest level as far as academics are concerned so just like you would in, in in athletics so I think that anytime you have the opportunity to take one of those classes if you feel comfortable doing so I think that um, it's a huge it makes a huge difference in preparation for college and getting you prepared for, to study and and um, and with and create good study habits moving forward uh, so I think all those are good attributes to have and I think Heritage does a really good job of offering enough classes for students to have the opportunity to take those classes and get better uh, prepared for college Thanks, guys, for that report. Moving on now, some more exciting news from our students. Yes, Brady. Three students, in fact, placed and won cash prizes for their entry in the FCM Literary Writing Competition at Columbus State University. Caden Moore, Mark Harris, and Allie Boyd took first, second, and third place in their respective competitions. And five-star <laughs> news reporter Kieran Freed, Brody Morrison, Devin Cannon, Isaac Delt talked to some of them about their accomplishments. Um, so I entered in every category because I took um, the dramatic writing class with Mr. Peace um, and I was really proud of the work that I submitted um, and I'm really glad I got to compete. Um, I placed first in, um, in a one act uh, play and I placed second in a short film. Um, my my one act play was, um, it was called Hesperia and it was about um, this like princess girl and it's in the future and it's basically just in this um, like dystopian kind it of society. It took a lot of advice from my peers. I talked to a lot of my English teachers, had them make suggestions. Uh, I made the poem my freshman year and I had been working on it since then. I made a few tweaks. I made some major changes right before I submitted it and I got a lot of advice from my teachers as I was working on it and that really helped me improve the poem to get second place. Um, it was pretty good. I wasn't, I mean, I really just submitted the things like I had heard about it and I decided I wanted to submit my um, things that I, my pieces I've written. I didn't think anything would happen or anything like that, but it was, it was pretty good. Um, there was creative nonfiction. I think there was uh, just regular fiction. There was 
oh gosh, like autobiographical or something like that, and memoirs and um, science fiction. There was like anything you could think of. There was tons of them. Congrats to all the participants. Time for a quick commercial break, Brady. And don't go away. No, sure don't. Sports is right around the corner. And we have a jam-packed lineup for you today. Recaps from state basketball and wrestling and season opening matchups for baseball and tennis teams as well. Hang around. Sports Sports is next. Welcome into sports everyone, it's Jonathan Glover and Lauren here and we're going to start today with our smoking hot girls basketball team in state. You know what, that sounds good to me. We were fresh off of a runner up finish in the region tournament, but we took on North Hall here at the Taj last night. Yep, Coach Oaken Juniors became the two seed and played number three North Hall at the Taj last night. How did it go? Let's find out. Our forward, our senior, number 20, Lauren We knew that um, they're going to be difficult to defend because they they move it around quick and they shoot a ton of threes and we knew we had to find a way to run them off the line and, and be effective defensively. Offensively, I thought we had a mismatch inside. You know, first half we exploited it. Second half, we kind of went away from it for some reason, but I was even though we were imploring them to get the ball back inside and we struggled with that second half. But Early on, we kind of figured out they couldn't really guard me or Macy inside, so that's kind of what we stuck to most in the first half at least. And we got a pretty big lead in the first half. Um, they started coming back a little bit in the second. We got a little nervous, but we were able to hit some big shots. I thought our defense really bailed us out, man. We, we really dug in, and I challenged the girls before the game and told them that uh, we need to show a lot of mental and physical toughness tonight. And I thought if we did, we'd have a chance to win. And, man, we just beat a really good team. I mean, that's a good basketball team. They didn't shoot the ball well tonight. I think part of that's because of the travel. I think the other part's because our defense was pretty darn good. I think it was like a we were rolling around on the floor and we got a kick out. And I was like, I mean, that girl's not really close to me, so I'm going to shoot it. I know my coaches probably didn't want me taking that shot, but I thought I'm open and I've hit a couple tonight already, so it'd be pretty good if I made it. So I thought I might as well take it. And it went in, so I'm pretty glad that happened. Lauren was huge tonight, man. So some of those shots, two of them, we actually yelled from the bench, no, yes, as it went in. I'm very happy. Uh, it's my senior year, so it's either it's win or be done with basketball. So um, hopefully we're going to keep playing good, and I'm glad we got this win to keep going on in the postseason. But at the end of the day, man, the, the name of the game is survive in advance, and we survived in advance, so I couldn't be happier for them. Congrats, coaches and players, and shout out Lauren with an 18-point double-double. To wrestling now, we're talking individuals. Coach Kraft sent several Heritage wrestlers down to Macon last weekend to wrestle for the state finals. And our generals did pretty good, Lauren. We had several people placed in the state tournament and two finished runner-up. For more on the event, here's five-star sports reporters Silas, Tipton, and Gabe. I think the team did a great job overall. They worked hard and uh, they made some great accomplishments. I think we could have done a little bit better uh, than, what we, than what we did, but I still think that uh, we did well overall, finishing fifth in the state in duels and then still finishing in 11th, one place out of the top 10 or one po- point and a half out of the top 10 in traditional. And we ended up with a couple of state finalists and state medalists and some other guys that finished uh, top seven in the state. Tate did a great job. He. Uh, scored a lot of points for the team. He did really well 
and finishing as a state finalist is an awesome accomplishment. Um, we went down to Macon, and we wrestled well, I think. We could have done better, especially me. I mean, I fell in the finals, which is very sad for me because I that was my dream of mine, just to win, but I came up a little bit short. But the kid deserved it. Evan did a great job. He out-wrestled all his opponents. He uh, had some bad luck there at the end, but uh, really he's a state champion in my eyes. He uh, finished uh, second in the state. Uh, he was winning this whole match right until the last few seconds of the match. So uh, I'm sure he's going to keep working hard and uh, end up being state champion next year. Uh, unfortunately, I got second place. Uh, lost three to four in the finals, but uh, two-time runner-up, which kind of sucks. Can't ever you know, get the job done, but there's always next year. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, high school nationals at Virginia Beach, so hopefully I can do pretty good there. Congrats to all you guys and coaches, and what a great year. To baseball now, Jonathan, and I know you're probably pretty happy about that. Oh yes, it's been a long time coming, that's for sure. And our guys got this season started off Tuesday night with a big 7-2 win over Dalton in the season opener. They sure did. Here's Five Star Sports reporters and everyone's favorite anchors, Max Owens, Brady Chandler, and Crew Norman with the report. The season opener went really well. Uh, started on the mound with us with uh, singer uh, Zach Barrett uh, giving us four good innings on the mound and uh, you know, was, was able to command the pitches that we needed him to do and uh, that's where it started. And, um, you know, third inning kind of got the offense untracked a little bit and uh, kind of started it from there. Yeah, so uh, we played Dalton Monday night as a home opener. Uh, we played pretty good. I feel like, you know, our pitching was really, really good. Um, defense was decent. We had a few errors in there, but nothing crazy. Um, definitely stuff to work on, but, you know, we definitely, definitely a good team win for the first game. It was good. It was a great season opener. You know, we had a lot of great hits. A lot of players performed great. We had a lot of – the pitchers did phenomenal, and uh, we're looking forward to Friday. So um, it was a, a good outing. Uh, we got some other guys on the mound. Uh, Garrison May gave us some middle inning relief. Uh, Jonathan Glover threw the seventh for us. So uh, we were looking to use three to four pitchers, which that's what it worked out to be. And, uh, you know, we, we got some, uh, some more runs and some insurance in the fifth run – in the fifth with three runs there. Uh, JJ with a home run there, but uh, it was good to see some defensive plays made, turn a double, turn a double play, um, and, uh, and and played played pretty well. So uh, it was a good first game. You know, I was really excited for the home run. You know, it was, it was a big deal, and I was happy that happened. But it wouldn't have happened without all the guys in front of me. That's what I'm talking about. We'll be back into action on Friday down at Cola Creek. To tennis now, and both Coach Mathis' girls and Coach Green's guys took the courts on Tuesday for their season openers. They played Christian Heritage. Yep, Lauren, and both our guys and girls had barely new rosters. But how did that translate on the court? Well, the guys picked up a big 4-1 win while the girls fell 5-0. Let's get over to our coaches for both of the recaps. The boys tennis team uh, got a pretty big win uh, in the season opening match on Tuesday night against Christian Heritage. Uh, it was 4-1. Uh, it was a little closer than that, though. Uh, Christian Heritage was pretty good last year, and we beat them last year. This year, uh, we have some new players, and I didn't really know what to kind of expect in their first match, but we played really well. The singles guys really took care of business. Caleb Biddle won in straight sets at number one seed. It went pretty well. The one 6-2, 6-1. Uh, it was pretty dominant, but the win had a big factor in it. Dario Fonio is a foreign exchange student. He played basketball with me, and we got him to play tennis, and he's really a pretty good player, so that's a pleasant surprise for us. He won at number two, single six four six three. Uh, I feel pretty good. It was my first time, so I was very like excited about it. But I think I played pretty good, and I'm happy for the team. And then the toughest match of the day was our number three single spot, which Thomas Culpepper uh, lost the first set, but really came back and uh, played really well in the second, third sets, and won six one six one. So we had the ma match clinch going into doubles. Uh, so that was nice as a coach not to have to really sweat that because we got some new doubles teams uh, playing for us this year. And we've got Jed Johnson over in Nicaragua, so he's out. I feel pretty good. I'm still a little rusty, but I'm getting there. Uh, but number one doubles lost. Two freshmen, Kevin Yang and Will Farmer, played a pretty good match against probably Christian Heritage's best guys at number one. They lost 6-4, 6-3. And then number two doubles, Mac and John Keith just uh, really annihilated their number two team, 6-0, uh, 6-0. So 
good win for us. Uh, we're excited about it. Okay, we played Christian Heritage and we lost 0-5. Oh um, we several of our girls put up a good fight, but in the end lost. But we did have several people who were brand new, and that was their first match ever. So I think that they did well, given we were playing a private school who prioritizes tennis. Um, we do still have to work on teamwork, and we have to work on um, pushing and just trying to win every ball, every point. But other than that, I'm proud of how they played. Wow. That was a busy sports segment. Congrats to all of our teams and athletes for a great weekend of HHS sports. To entertainment now, and we have our very own BBB crew locked and loaded with their latest edition of the Five Star News, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Roll it, guys. Yo, what is good, guys? Back here with another segment of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Let's go! Um, your best friend, Evan Joyner, how you doing? I'm good, how are you, AJ? Not bad. I'm gonna ask you a few questions today. Alright. The first one is, who invented the light bulb in 1879? Thomas Edison. That is correct. Alright, who are we here with? Um, Eli. And, uh, who invented the light bulb in 9 or 1879? Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Who are we here with today? Ian Gonzalez. Ethan Gonzalez. Okay, first question. Who invented the light bulb in 1879? Thomas Edison. Oh, Brian Stein. That is correct. No, the Tom <laughs> Thomas Edison is correct. <laughs> Which language is most widely spoken in South America? Spanish. That is correct. Which language is most widely spoken in South America? South America, let's go uh, Spanish. Correct. <laughs> Which language is most widely spoken in South America? Ooh. Spanish. That is correct. Neil Armstrong was the first man to do what? Land on the moon. That is correct. Neil Armstrong was the first person to do what? Land on the moon. Absolutely correct. Neil Armstrong was the first man to do what? Uh, going to the moon. That is correct. <laughs> that is it, guys, for our segment. Are you smarter than the fifth grade? Peace out. And with that, and all the sports we had for you today, that's going to wrap up this Wednesday edition of the Five Star News. We'll rejoin you again Friday with a brand new report. But until then, stay classy, Heritage. Heritage.